Hey everybody, welcome back to A New Way to Museum. Uh, I'm Reese, and I'm here with Alicia and today we're going to have a really fun topic of wood rats or as I like to call them pack rats but they're very cool and I think you're going to have a lot of fun today so if you get a chance please like and subscribe. So wood rats, Alicia, what can you tell me about them? <laughs> okay so recently this past summer at the Sternberg Museum we got our first mammal for our live collection in a very long time and it is a wood rat or a pack rat as most of them know. Them. So I actually got this wood rat from O'Reilly Auto Parts here in town when she came in on a delivery from Oklahoma. So they didn't know that she came in until she started stealing stuff from their purses and all of their shelves and stuff like that. And when I started finding broken pieces of stuff all over the ground and hearing wrestling, they're like, something's wrong here. So well, they, they are called trade rats, they, right? They are. So they came up, so she's this. just exchanging things from Oklahoma, yes. looking to try to haul some things back from Kansas. Yes. So we assume that with our pack rat, her name is Clover. She is not like any other pack rat I've met. She's actually very tame um, and very sweet, I guess. So she is a great addition to our live collection in our discovery room. So obviously pack rats, as we probably know from experience with them in the wild, they love to destroy human things. They love to take all of our stuff and add it to their little dens, their nests and stuff like that. And so most people try to get rid of them. They don't like them and stuff like that. So we're going to talk about why I like them and why they're actually kind of good. And then Reese is also going to say why he likes them. So Clover, I, she was extremely easy to catch. She kind of just walked into a tote and we brought her here and we've had her for a few months now and she's great. So we can show you your, her cage and everything and she has a bunch of human stuff. Um, she gets dog toys and yarn and stuff like that. Has she taken any of your stuff? Do you have found anything missing? I have not. My worst fear is her escaping her wooden cage, which she could easily chew out of if she wanted to and destroying my already destroyed room. Because if she got loose, we would never get her back and she would steal all of the stuff that I love. So yes, she has stolen keychains from a few people. She has stolen rings and has broken some stuff out of Riley's, but it's fine because she's extremely cute. So wood rats or pack rats, lots of people, like I said, don't like them, but they're actually very good. So they can build these really intricate nests and stuff like that. And they're super cool. They have bedrooms and bathrooms and places where they store food and stuff like that. And obviously they like to take our stuff and put it in there. So these little nests and different parts of the world, they are used by other animals as homes too, as for protection stuff. And if they're built on the outside with sticks and twigs and stuff, obviously other rodents can use them. But some wood rats also have dens in the ground. So they have burrows and stuff like that that are home for snakes and tortoises and stuff like that as well as doing that kind of digging in the ground is really good for us in terms of aerating the soil and stuff like that so people don't really realize that they are important so pack rats are vegetarians so our clover really likes strawberries and blueberries but she also eats seed which is important out in the wild for seed dispersal for being able to plant new plants and stuff like that so they are very beneficial despite the fact that they like to destroy cars from what i hear <laughs> <laughs> lots of people have told me that they have issues with pack rats destroying their cars chewing up wires and stuff but it's nice and warm under the hood in the is. engine I mean, and you can't there's blame lots them, of can cool you? little wires that chew on this is true so we have a couple of pack rats from our collections downstairs different couple of species so what we have here is we have an eastern wood rat so that's what this one is um, that's the only kind of wood rat i've ever had experience with um, i've heard about the bushy-tailed wood rats kind of from nebraska which would be this one um, i am from nebraska so that'd be the kind we have there oh, let's see that bushy tail you want to see the bushy let's tail? see the bushy tail. the bushy tail look at that compare oh, look at that i think see? the tail's the cutest part about it see? there's there's no the the interesting thing is there is no you know, I always think of rats having a naked tail <laughs> and the wood rats are cool because they don't have a naked tail. So even the one with has a, yes, has some fur, just it's just not as bit. bushy it's as the uh, Eastern one. So yes, I personally love the tail as well as, you know, can't tell from these guys, but they have really cute eyes. 
so you can see that on Clover, her eyes are adorable, and they just force me to give her whatever she wants, including my keys. So, but yes, and then we have, I think it's a white-throated wood rat, which you can see is a lot smaller than ours. Um, I'm it's not very sure. Small. This one's from New Mexico. New Mexico. So the ones from the Southwest are a little bit smaller than the ones from the Midwest or the East, East Coast, but they still have some fur on their tails. Um, so they're still kind of cute, and they're really important for um, studying archaeology. Yes, that's why he's here with me, because I handle live animals. I did, you know, study all of the collections and whatnot, but I mainly work with the live animals. So when we got the pack rat on display, I was so thrilled because she's my first mammal I've had here on display. And then she's the one mammal I could really give all these human stuff to without it seeming weird. So Reese is with me so that he can talk about why pack rats are beneficial to his side of studies. <laughs> well, that's right. See, I, I generally have worked with dead things, but it's kind of cool when you look at a pack rat, they got this nice big teeth, right? and which they can use to pick up things and haul them around. One of the things that's cool about pack rats is they don't go more than about 15 to 50 yards away from their nest. So they're very localized. And so they drag things from that fairly narrow radius back to their, their um, nest. And as Alicia said, they've got bedrooms, they've got places for food, they dig these tunnels. They also have a waste room. These guys don't like to um, spend too much time on the surface. They're nocturnal because they don't want to get eaten by owls and snakes and things. So they haul all their stuff and they have a waste room where they will pee and they will poop. And what's really weird and interesting is the things that they collect, they take to the waste room and they stick it around in the floor and on the walls of the waste room and then they pee on it. And um, the wood rat pea has a lot of calcium oxalate in it and it hardens. And so it essentially fossilizes the things that it takes into its waste room. And they can take all kinds of things. They can take oftentimes a lot of uh, leaves or grasses, uh, seeds. And because they get peed on, they get fossilized essentially intact. So they, they don't, uh, degrade or uh, through time. So you get all kinds of particular types of plants and leaves. You can also get bones. They'll haul all kinds of things in, um, even if there's no humans around. So you can get little vertebrae, you can get leg bones. They'll pick them up and haul things off and stick them into their waste room and pee on them. And that preserves them for a long time. It actually ends up looking like chunks of stuff, of fossils that you then have to if you want to study what's in the, what they call middens, and that's really the waste room is called the midden because it's where everything's been fossilized. Um, you sometimes have to take really hard, big rock hammers to chip and try to break it up because it becomes rock solid or put it in, um, try to dissolve it in acid and things. And it might take days or weeks in order to loosen things up so you can actually study what's actually in the midden. But it's really useful because once you get the plant material out, you can carbon date it. And you can, so you can find pack rat bins back of 40,000 years. And um, a lot of times, paleoclimate people are trying to find pollen and things just in the soil profiles to get an idea of what climate change was like through time. But with pack rats, you can actually find the leaves. You can figure out exactly what species of plants there are. Um, and a lot of times that will really give you specifics on rainfall data and humidity and temperature. Um, and when you have carbon data, you know exactly what time it came from. So pack rat middens found through time will give you a really detailed um, climate data over the last 40,000 years. So you can check on the last ice age. Um, so it's, it's pretty impressive and uh, you can look at these days, they've come up with new techniques for DNA, where they can just look at the middens and do uh, shotgun DNA analysis, and they'll figure out um, what other animals were living in the area. 
right? So they can get all the plant data, they get uh, uh, bacterial data, and they will get other animal data. Uh, so it gets a, a really good snapshot of everything that was living in an area through time. And some pack rat uh, middens have been um, inhabited, or the, the, the nesting areas have been inhabited for over a thousand years. So you can get actual um, very uh, specific changes in plant faunas mm -hmm. um, through time because you've got the same pack rat area that's been been uh, accumulating things. It's also cool for, for younger stuff because as Alicia talked about, they'll steal all kinds of things. There might be little tools. There's gonna be cloth or ribbons. They could find toys, things that they will all take back to their middens um, in more modern times. And it's been very useful in studying uh, places like Chaco Canyon, where there, you can study sort of ancient Native Americans and what kind of climate changes happened or what kinds of things have been found with them um, over time. There's been some places on the East Coast where there were houses where um, the enslaved people were living in areas and they'd find little bits and pieces that increased the record of what, uh, how those people were living during those times and added to the record because there wasn't as much written record. Um, so it really uh, sort of elucidates the, the different ways that people live because pack rats live right next to them. These days, they learn a lot about what kind of vehicles we're around. <laughs> yeah, in a couple thousand years, people are going to think we're really weird from what pack rats collected from us. So, yeah, there's there's a couple really weird stories of you know somebody studying pack rat middens and having some food that they're eating, like an apple, and sitting it down, working, and then looking back, and the apple's gone, <laughs> and they climb out and see a pack rat hauling off their mm -hmm. apple. Clover uh, loves apples. Cl she really see, does. exactly. Clover loves apples. Now, the weirdest one I, I, I saw was that there were some people heading out to the gold rush, heading out to California, and it was a long, kind of a grueling trip, mm -hmm. and they were starving, and they stopped in some cliffs, and they saw this sort of, sh sh had a nice sheen, this kind of amberish looking stuff, and they saw food inside of it, like right? oh. seeds and things that were there, so they thought they'd try to eat it. Interesting. And so they ate some pack rat bitten, and they said it, the records say that it tasted sickly sweet. Oh, oh goodness. And afterwards it made them feel a little bit nauseous and sick. <laughs> but there have, there's records of people actually eating well, pack there, rat there midden urine and surviving to tell about it. There you go, survival tips. <laughs> Find the pack rats. So these cute little guys are, um, Fascinating, and they like a lot of rats. They like to catch, you know, grab things, but they're not ratus. They're not uh, like the Norwegian rats or the black rats, the brown rats that have followed Europeans all around the world. Um, these are neotoma. Right? Yes. So they're, they're native, and again, they give you a great record. And when you find stuff in their middens, you know it's from right there because they don't travel farther than about. 15 to 50 yards from their den. So you have a really localized, accurate record of what was going on in that specific area, which just makes them all the cuter. Yeah, they don't even get paid for all their work. <laughs> Granted, we pay clover and cuddles and apples, so. Tis true. And rings from cupcakes. And rings from cupcakes. <laughs> so anyway, if you guys uh, see pack rats, and you know, recognize that they're really cute, and even though they can be relatively destructive um, in the wrong situations, um, they've been very important in understanding the climate of the planet and the vegetation of the planet over the last several ice ages, and also helping uh, unravel a little bit more of human history. Um, so very useful little guys. And we, have, or at least Alicia's decided that they're fun, cute little things to play with they as are. opposed to, you know, trying to get rid of. 
Yes, I agree. So we're and not feeding him to a snake anytime soon? No, we are not. Okay. Besides, I mean, you, you see these teeth, right? No mm -hmm. offense to any of our snakes, but I think Clover would show them what she's worth. So. <laughs> All right, guys. So um, we appreciate you joining us today. Hope you learned a little bit about um, wood rats. I know we, we biologically yeah. want to make sure we're calling them wood rats yes. and, and not our colloquial pack terms rats. of pack rats. So, um, but wood rats are awesome little species. Hope you learned something and enjoyed it. And look forward to seeing you here again next week on the Sternbergs, A New Way to Museum. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.